All right guys, so it's officially been a full day and a half now since we had a freeze event come into the area. We had dropped all the way down to 25 degrees Fahrenheit and remained below freezing for seven plus hours. During that time, I had several dwarf fruit trees that were in bloom and was concerned about losing some of my crop, if not all my crop. So what I ended up doing was employing a technique that's often used by professional fruit tree growers. Whereas I drenched all of the fruit trees using an overhead watering system, sprinkler system, in order to proactively freeze the tree, creating an endothermic effect, which was insulating and shielding the tree, helping it to retain its heat. Now, I made several different videos documenting that process, but I just wanted to come out here today and do another update video, show you where we're at, um, if we still have positive results now that it's been a full day and a half. And I'm happy to report everything is looking wonderful. Right here I'm standing in front of this Florida King peach tree and all of the blossoms are full of life, looking great. There's bees around the tree. Um, I've inspected many of the actual flowers, pulling them apart, looking at the pistil and the ovary uh, located within the center of the flower. All of these flowers on this tree and the other trees is still fully alive. Here we've got a white nectarine tree and some of the bud swell here is now starting to bloom. This tree remained very healthy as well. I've got several trees that are still in their dormancy. All the blossoms here on this apricot tree are looking great. And this tree is still halfway dormant. So where you see there's not any flowers, this hasn't actually opened up yet. So it's been a slow opening for the tree, but all of the initial blossoms that were on this tree prior to the, rain, uh, the freeze event are still there and healthy. Over here we've got an aprium tree, same exact thing. I'm not seeing any damage whatsoever. I've inspected the tree thoroughly, looked at the base of the tree. There's been no uh, flower drop or anything like that. So there you go. Uh, this is definitely um, a successful strategy that I'll be employing in the future. I've got some more trees over here I want to show you. The Santa Rosa plum tree, since this last day and a half, has exploded with many, many more blossoms. And all the blossoms that were originally on the tree are still there. And here's another Santa Rosa plum tree. And same thing. We had a few blossoms prior to the event. They all stayed on the tree, remained healthy. And over the course of the last day and a half, the trees continued to bloom out. So it's looking like we're going to get some really good crops off these trees. So now I just want to take a moment to continue the conversation and share with you what it is I learned and how I'm going to apply that newfound knowledge in the future to help to modify the technique to become more successful and hopes to help you guys streamline the process as well if you're looking to do something similar. So the first challenge I had come into was that when I first came out to the garden that evening to start watering my plants, the hoses had partially froze and that was an issue. So in the future, what I plan on doing is making trenches throughout the garden and possibly having a permanent watering system using PVC pipe and such, uh, but even just burying the rubber hoses to the points where I could still connect into them and have other hoses above ground but to actually have water sources brought to the points where I do that overhead watering and where I may do it in the future. So that way I can help to insulate those hoses from becoming frozen. So the next thing I wanted to discuss is in regards to setting up timers to have a system like this run automatically when you know a freeze is coming in. So just like many of you, I'm sure, what I've got are the Rainbird uh, automatic timers. You can set them up for drip irrigation, sprinkler systems, and they're great. The issue with it is, is that as I read closer on the packaging, it warns to not use in freezing conditions. So to try to use something that specifically says not to be used in freezing conditions for that purpose wouldn't be too wise. So I'm going to have to invest in the future in something more commercial grade uh, that can handle those freezing temperatures. The other issue with the Rainbird timers is that uh, depending on the model you have, they don't allow you for uh, many cycles. Uh, the, the higher end model that I had allowed for three different cycles meaning you could program it to say, let's come on at uh, 1.30, shut off at 2, come back on at 2.30, shut off at 3, and so on and so forth. You can only set up three different cycles for any given particular day. 
and you'd need something to cycle on and off maybe 20 times. So a commercial timer, hopefully um, I can find something that'll solve both those issues, can handle the freezing temperatures and also give me the ability to program 20 cycles in one particular day. Also I found it's critically important to hone in to the time that you want to keep the sprinklers on and off rotating between the different sprinkler heads. The colder it gets, the longer of intervals you're going to keep the sprinkler on, the shorter time you're going to want to turn it off for a couple reasons. You're going to want a consistent water flow the colder it gets to make sure that you keep that ice nice and clear. If you allow too much time in between watering, the ice may begin to turn hazy, which is exothermic, and in fact will start to damage the tree, allowing the tree to release its heat. Also, by waiting too long, you risk the potential of your water lines freezing in between the on-off cycle. So I found that going all the way down to 25 degrees Fahrenheit, a 20 minute on, 20 minute off cycle was appropriate. But for other folks tuning in, that's something that you're gonna to wanna to consider. So how does this whole process work anyway? I'm sure there's a lot of folks who are wondering, how is it that you're gonna use ice in order to combat an ice or frost-like situation that occurs during a freeze? Well, the answer is actually quite simple, and that's that there's an energy transfer that occurs as water begins to freeze. This is known as the latent heat of fusion. And during this process, something occurs known as an endothermic reaction, in which the heat of the plant is trapped inside of itself. Essentially, you're insulating the plant, keeping it safe from the outside freeze coming in. Now, the key to making this work is that you're constantly dousing the plant with an outside source of water in order to keep that ice clear. It doesn't have to be consistent, but consistent enough to where that ice doesn't become hazy like an ice cube in the freezer. Once that occurs, something happens known as an exothermic reaction, and at that point, damage can start to set in as the plant will start to release its heat out into the ice. So by continually dousing a tree with water and a sprinkler during a freeze event, in effect what you're doing is preventing the ice from continually getting colder and instead building onto the ice that's already formed like you saw in my video with the icicles, which is continuing the process of latent heat effusion. Now for the ice to begin to melt, it needs an outside energy source, so the ambient temperature created by the sun is enough to start to turn that solid back into a liquid, which again creates a transfer of energy until the ice is completely melted. And once fully melted, the buds and flowers on the tree are released back into a conducive environment where the weather's above freezing temperatures. 